Hey, 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 welcome to another Valley Forged. So I got the Algo Laser Alpha MK2 diode laser engraver. Now this is a 22 watt and I really wanted to like it. You know, uh, it's a really pretty machine. It's got a really cool screen on it. It has auto air, you know, turns on and off through light burn works great uh the module shuts off when you're not using it so nice actually it stays on for a little bit cools off the laser module and then turns off it's really ideal the cutting is good three millimeter any three millimeter that i tried looked good I did my typical test on it and uh, I'll post that, but the little nice and so I'll bring up a picture. Uh, this is the engrave lines, uh, no air, looking good, cut out really, really well. Uh, again, this is uh, like 450 speed with one pass for uh, MDF three millimeter. That's actually really good. Uh, so it cut out nice. The engraving looks nice. Like I said, I'll show you a picture. I have it with the S1 and with the 70 watt. Uh, if the S1 was the 20 watt, and then I, I did a test with the uh, A70, the 70 watt that I have, and uh, it looks great. Um, but then I did the exact same test again, and it looks like this. And I'll show you in the video, it has them next to each other. And uh, when we get to the negatives here in a little bit, I'm going to tell you why that happened. And um, yeah, very interesting. But the cutting and engraving, well, I'll say the cutting and I'll get to the engraving in a second. Good. When it gets to like over four millimeter, you're going to probably need two passes on any sort of like, you know, sturdy wood, MDF core, like uh, walnut, um, maple, that type of thing, at least on my testing. Um, I'll show, show you pictures. I have of the walnut 400, 100 twice, uh, did a really good job. Nothing else cut out. And, uh, I tried 200, 260 millimeters per minute. Uh, one pass would not cut out six millimeter walnut, uh, with MDF core and a 4.75 millimeter, uh, maple with MDF core would not cut out one pass. Uh, but I did in two passes again, 450, two times worked great, cut out. Since I have the half inch maple, I figured, hey, I'll try that out. Uh, two, three passes, two passes at uh, 260 millimeters per minute, did not cut it out, got pretty close. Uh, and then if you look at three passes at 260 millimeters per minute, it's, I can, I'll punch it out right here on screen. There, came out very easy. Uh, a couple of little burrs there, but again, this is a half inch maple, uh, actual hardwood. So, you know, you can do it if, if you had to, but it, I certainly would not buy this machine to be cutting out half inch. Four millimeter is probably the most that you're gonna wanna cut out consistently. As any bigger than that, you're going to need two passes, and so the time is going to take a lot more. Might be worth upgrading to a 30 watt, which you're going to be able to cut through quarter inch much easier. Now, of course, it's just my opinion. I'm giving you my first thoughts uh, and opinions. This is all my opinions. Uh, engraving, engraving looks good. Uh, I'll show. I brought up some pictures. Uh, this is my first try at it. I just threw in some settings that I thought would be good. I mean, this is a picture I use for all the lasers and it, you know, it looks clean. doesn't look any better or worse than the S1 in my opinion. Uh, that's at 16,000 millimeters per minute and hundred percent power. And it has a nice deep engrave there. I almost thought it was going to be way too deep when I first, uh, when it first started, but it ends up, I think that actually is about what I was aiming for. Now, this is uh, pure cherry that I'm doing this on, and uh, obviously I'm not trying to cut that out. So as far as just normal cutting and engraving, it does 
the job you would expect. Maybe for three millimeter, it actually cuts a little better than other lasers. And the speed in between cuts is a little faster than what I see from other lasers. And that's kind of nice. It does have a lot of controls on this, the little screen. And, uh, and uh, I'll post up a picture of their uh, launch event or whatever, where they go through how to use that screen and you don't even need a computer. And that's pretty cool. But then we come to my first negative. How do you use that screen if you have a, an enclosure? You would need an enclosure that the very front opens up for you to even use it or else trying to put your hands in there and try and use that screen where your enclosure is, is just like nearly it's since I end up lifting the whole enclosure and then, uh, trying to mess with that screen. You know, I'm not somebody who would be using that screen much. Anyways, I use light burn. That's just my way. But I think you get what I'm saying. So at least think of that if you're thinking about buying this laser. Like, how are you going? If you want to use that screen, how are you going to access it? Because it is pretty cool. And it's one of the features of having this machine. You can like run a job straight from there. Um, and I I'm going to mention this is on pre-sale. And of course, I'll have a link below and uh, all of that. And they did send this laser to me. It's it's all it's always difficult, you know, to point out so many negative things about a laser somebody sends you. But, you know, we've got to get used to being able to do that. And I just want the company to improve. I'm not an algal, algal laser hater or anything. I want to see them improve. I hope that they take a look at what I'm saying here and they say, oh, you know, obviously this is his opinion only. I don't have the hugest channel. I'm not going to make the biggest impact but I think what I'm saying has value because I am a cust I run a business full time with a laser. And so this working correctly for me was important. I wanted to use it for a while. Where I come to my second thing that I really don't like much is this, the whole module. Uh, now look at this right through, you know, I have the lights on pretty hard right now, you know, for the filming. Can you see the, the laser head? The whole inside of this is black. And that, of course, it will cut down on reflection. But this is a very dark laser glass as well. I cannot see anything going on. It's, it's, a, it's literally a black box when you're looking, because there's not a lot, which is another slight negative, is the distance uh, with the focusing ring you're not getting a ton of distance between this and your material more than the old Adam stack, which was terrible, but, um, the new Adam stacks are great. Don't, you know, but I'm the old Adam stack was so close. You were always hitting something. Well, with this one, it's pretty close, but you can't take this off. You know, I, I think there's a few of us reviewers that this is one of the first things we do usually is take this cover off so that we can see where the laser's going. I mean, even if you put on the, uh, thing in Lightburn where you can, when you frame it, you can actually see the laser so you know where it is. You really can't use that with this because it's so dark and then it's so difficult to, and I can't look under because the distance is so short. It's like, what am I supposed to do with this? I think your only real solution, if you want to be able to see it, is to just use a, a blade or something, and actually a metal blade, and cut this off. It's a... Uh, I, you know, I think Clack Shack, he did a video on this too. And, uh, he's a, he's a fan of Alga laser. I'm not, an, I'm, I'm not against Alga laser. I think they're great, but, uh, he mentioned the same thing as not being able to take this off, but he mentioned that maybe it's for legal reasons or something. They need to have this type of box on it, but I know they don't need to make it where you can't take it off. There are so many lasers where you can just unscrew this. There's no reason why you can't have that. Uh, I would prefer it to be all glass like this the whole way around or even plastic or something. But uh, yeah, it's frustrating. And uh, why we're on this, I will tell you, it's easy to take the nozzle off and clean the lens cover. Now I just cleaned it. I think there's even a little thread in there from the Q-tip. Uh, I just cleaned it cause it was already dirty. Now I've used this thing for maybe 40 minutes, maybe. 
and it was already dirty. Now that could be my fault for a reason I'm about to bring up. I, I kind of alluded to this earlier, is that now it has the auto air feature in Lightburn, which I like. So I had the air assist down to zero when I did this particular one, and it looks great, right? I ran the exact same test again, and then it looked like this. Now what gives? I also noticed that it was much noisier. Well, it turns out that they have a minimum amount of air that's going to come through the air assist, which is, I can understand, you know, the lens got dirty, so it needs it for some reason. Usually the fan that keeps the laser cool kind of blows down and keeps the air off of the lens, and so you don't have to have the air on. But for this one, obviously you do need that. Problem is, is now once the air turns on even that minimum amount, it's like level three out of the full one, it stays on forever. So when you're done with the job, yeah, the, the fan from the module will turn off, but the actual pump, which is just as loud, will not turn off. So, you know, you can go over there by hand and you can turn it off. And then the next job you run, that air will be off and it... <laughs> <laughs> when you do the engrave until it until lightburn tells it to turn on again and then it just stays on forever but at level 3 after it's done cutting i hope that's not too confusing uh but needless to say when that air is on at level 3 the engravings look terrible and it just leaves this smoke all around it and so if you did any engraving, you would want to have it off, which means you have to turn it off by hand and then start it and then turn it off again before you do another engraving or it's going to look like that. Uh, frustrated because I wanted to do leather, but I am not going to take a chance on me accidentally that that uh, air coming on to level three and blowing smoke all over my le leather and destroying it because my leather is very expensive. Because I, I was planning on my next video uh, sh doing a new leather wallet uh, that I want to share with you guys. And you, you know I've already done a couple of videos on making leather wallets and everybody loves them and they're doing fantastic and uh, rave reviews, which is wonderful. So I'm thinking, you know... I have this new design I really like. I wanted to combine wood and leather and it was going to be cool. And I was going to use this laser, <laughs> but now I'm just scared because I don't want to destroy uh, it. You know, I think it's a major deal. And that, that is enough to make me not want to keep doing it. Um, easy fix. All these are super easy fixes or well, the module thing is a little more difficult. You got to do that in the design stage. But I'm guessing by their next laser, they will have fixed that because between Clack Shack, you know, he has a much bigger channel than I. I would say the only other real negative I ran into uh, was the setup and instructions were, you know, not that great. I, I'm i not the best at setting up and uh, lasers. You know, I always seem to make some sort of error, but with this one, when I found out what the errors were that I made, I felt like, you know what, this isn't very clear in the instructions and uh, could have been spelled out a little better. I think the instructions are beautiful. I think to be fair though, uh, it's always better to have a video and this is a laser that's not quite out yet. Uh, so there will be somebody who makes a good video on how to put this together. And hopefully I'll be able to link that at some point. Now it is $600. It does include the air, which is, which is awful nice. Uh, but if you go to my video on the best laser laser at any budget, I, I'll want you to compare that with uh, what this one costs and what you get because if you were using the say outside so you can easily get to that screen, uh, then, and, and it's not in an enclosure. Well, you know, having that ability to do everything on that screen might be useful for you. It's a color screen. It has a lot of functions. It may be pretty nice. And this does have a lot of 
Uh, you can see the enclosure that they even recommend. You won't be able to get to the screen. So uh, there are a lot of things. I mean, they have an extension for this. There, there's a lot to it. Uh, uh, I don't see you ever making one of these. It's about 400 by 400 millimeters, which is fine. Uh, but like, again, 400 by 800 extension, which could be really nice. Uh, overall build quality is very nice. I love where they put these cables and everything. It worked really well with my case. Uh, hooking it up to light burn was super easy. I didn't have any issues there. They're saying right here that you can get an optional uh, 40 watt uh, module for it, which, uh, you know, it's nice to be able to have that possible upgrade. But when I clicked on it, it didn't it didn't take me to the 40 watt module. So I, I don't know if that's actually the case. Yeah. It doesn't seem to be listed. So, so I just laid it all out to you. You know, you can see this is, these are the only negative things that I found, but there were quite a few. Uh, the laser's not out yet. I will be getting feedback from the company. I will try and leave that in a pinned comment. Anything that I made in mistake that I would like to change um, I will also have for links for this products down below. And, uh, I do want to thank Algo laser for sending me this laser. And I hope that they use my feedback into making it better. If that is what they feel after what I said, they might look at it and go, well, this guy, he doesn't know what he's talking about. And that's fine. Maybe I don't. This is just my personal opinion, how I felt after using the laser. And, uh, I will see you in the next one. Love y'all.